In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I work with images in Adobe Captivate. So, for starters, I'm working with um, one of my courses where I have a quiz question on who is the current head of state of Canada. The correct answer is Queen Elizabeth II, but I put a bunch of distractors on there as well. Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Prime Minister Paul Martin, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, Governor General David Lloyd Johnston, and the the purpose of this question is uh, it, it is kind of a trick question, I'll admit. The assumption I think many people would have is that uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper is the head of state, since he is the current leader of the country. But in fact, because we are part of the United Kingdom, or part of the, I don't know what the, the correct word is, we're part of the British Empire, um, if there is such a thing anymore, Queen Elizabeth II is, in fact, our head of state in Canada. Uh, and, and the course mentions that, and just, of course, the distractors are there to see if you're paying attention. So, I'm doing some work in Photoshop. Now, one of the things that, you know, we see often in training courses, PowerPoints, uh, even e-learning courses, is that people will grab grab images from the internet, and there'll be images of various sizes and shapes, and aspect ratios and they'll just kind of plop them on the page and I find that that's not good enough for my standards. I want, uh, if I'm going to use, in this case I want to have five images on the screen, I want them to appear uh, symmetrical and, uh, and I want there to be a sense of uh, unity as if these photos were planned and not just randomly grabbed from the internet. Um, I have another video that talks about grabbing photos from the internet, and it's probably worth uh, taking a look at as well. And I'll put that, uh, I'll put a card for it right here. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, using uh, Photoshop, and I've decided to use um, a 100 by 100 image, or, or pixel rather, image of the various um, people that this particular course references. So this way all the image sizes, while the images themselves are different from one another because they've come from different sources, certainly the aspect ratio and the size of the images will remain the same. So I have an image of Queen Elizabeth II, I have an image of Stephen Harper, and I have an image of former Prime Minister Paul Martin as well and I have, uh, I'm going to just about to paste in uh, former Prime Minister uh, Jean Chrétien. So we're going to copy uh, this image from, a, from another web page here, and I'm just going to paste that in. So here's the first problem that comes to mind. The image that I've grabbed is not 100 pixels by 100 pixels. It's actually much larger. In fact, you can't even see it. All you can see is part of the upper left hand corner of the image. So the very first thing I do in Photoshop, and I know I'm using an earlier version of Photoshop, but uh, this should work across all the current versions as well. I'm going to use the Edit drop down menu and go down to Transform, in other words transform this image, and in fact very specifically this layer of the image, and I'm going to choose Scale. Now, there's a couple things I want to do. I want to lock the aspect ratio, uh, or maintain the aspect ratio. So I'm going to click this little link icon that's located in the, uh, the, the taskbar, or the toolbar up here. And that's going to lock it so that I don't resize it uh, arbitrarily one way or the other. The other thing is I'm going to select a different reference point location, or anchor point if you will. I'm going to use the upper left hand corner, and now all I need to do is select either the width or height in the percentage columns here, and just uh, reduce those numbers until I get an image size that's suitable for my needs, in this case something that fits within this window. And once I'm satisfied, all I need to do is click the check mark here. And then, of course, I can use the position control here to you know, put that roughly in the middle of the frame. I'm going to hit File, 
save for web and devices. And it's just a small little 100 by 100 image. It's not huge. I'm just going to save this to my desktop. Now let's take a look at the course here. I also need uh, a photo of uh, Governor General David Lloyd Johnson. So we'll just use our trusty internet here. Governor, sorry, uh, General David Lloyd Johnson. Is it Johnson or Johnston? I'm sure it'll tell me one way or the other here. Johnston. So let's take his photo from Wikipedia. Uh, that's probably our best bet there. Um, eh, not the best photo in the world, but it will do. And we'll just uh, right click on that, copy image. We'll minimize that. We'll return to Photoshop in this case here. And again, repeat that process and I'll just quickly transform the scale not forgetting to lock the aspect ratio and selecting the upper left hand corner reference point. This time I'll scroll with the height here until I get something that's close to satisfactory. And that looks good. Hit the check mark. We can reposition that and I will just do a save for web or devices here and um, David Lloyd. Great, so that is uh, all the images that I need. Now this actually, the purpose of this video is to actually address a question that one of the viewers has had. They've had difficulty putting images on question slides. Uh, it works the same as every other question slide. So let's just first of all get all these images on the page here. So there's uh, Governor General David Lloyd Johnson. Stephen Harper. Paul Martin. The Queen. And last but not least, Mr. Kretchen. So where this can be helpful to you is that all of these images are appearing on the timeline. So you can determine uh, where they appear on the, uh, the image, of course, by, by selecting them and, and moving them around. Oop, I grabbed the, the answers. Well, that's fine. Let's just move that aside and we can decide um, how these will be placed. I don't necessarily have to have them in the same order uh, as they appear in the question. Uh, again, just going to show the, the user, the learner, that these are the folks that we're talking about here. And we could group these together. That might be beneficial. Uh, before I do that, I do want to point out that the alignment toolbar is a really useful toolbar for stuff like this. Let's make sure they're all aligned to the top row uh, or to the top uh, pixel of them all and make sure that they're distributed horizontally. Now I'm going to group them together so essentially they now function as a single image and really it's up to you to figure out how you're going to place them on the screen. Um, I'll put them down here but of course, as you can see, that leads to a problem. I have um, these answers that need to go back on the page as well. Well, here's a little trick that I came up with once. Uh, while typically answer, answers show up um, you know, from top to bottom, there's nothing to say you can't change that. So let's, uh, let's take the longest name, which is Governor General David Lloyd Johnston and we'll just make that as short as we can get away with. That's about there. And we're just going to select all the other answers or the names of the people and resize to the same size using the alignment toolbar. Okay. 
Now, one of the problems with this particular question is that the space, my plan was is to move uh, two of the answers over to here. And, uh, and the problem, of course, is that the answers themselves would overlap. So that's not entirely going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this answer box a little bit. And we'll just move this over a tad bit until we're no, we know for sure that the answers are not overlapping one another. A little bit more. Let's just take it a little bit further. So about there, I guess, is probably where I'm going to get uh, closest to. And now it's all about working with the alignment toolbar. Because as you can see, the first answer is answer B, and that's simply because it's a little bit lower on the screen than this answer here. So let's first of all align these for the top. Do the same thing for Stephen Harper and Governor General David Lloyd Johnston. And I'm just going to align these two so that they're the same left edge on these two. And this is okay because if I do randomize these these answers I really don't have to worry too much uh, because now I know that they're all the same size so I can just center the entire answer box on the page and let's just give them a little extra room by moving uh, this up and you know you can just drag that up and then drag that up so there we go we have uh, a fairly nice alignment here I think for the most part this way nothing is blocking one another we have examples of all the uh, people on there. We can continue to have um, random um, or shuffle the answers so it won't matter what uh, order these appear in they'll all be visible and fit on the screen because all of these boxes are exactly the same size and they're sized for that largest entry of Governor General David Lloyd Johnston. So this should work quite well one of the things to keep in mind is, uh, you know, if you have multiple objects on the screen, you can use the timeline to ensure that certain things are not covering other things. Uh, if there's an item that needs to be the topmost layer, you literally can drag it to the top part of the timeline as well. So hopefully that should give you the results that you're looking for. Let's preview this and see how this looks and we'll preview the next five slides so we can see this. So there's our five answers. They've been uh, placed randomly and I can select, you know, and of course I've got these down here for reference. Who are these people? Well there they are. These are the five people in question and the correct answer of course is Queen Elizabeth II and submit and we're good to go. So that works pretty well. Um, hopefully that addresses um, what the viewers question who had about placing uh, images on question slides. It certainly can be done. Uh, you just have to have sort of a sense of using the alignment controls and maybe placing some of your your answer uh, you know like in the case of a multiple choice question placing your answers in a maybe an unusual or unorthodox location uh, but doesn't mean it can't be done and uh, so I, we have a really great example of a question that ha that works with the images as well guys if you like the videos that I'm producing I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was informative and helpful go ahead and give me a thumbs up